Crystals are highly ordered structures. They could be made up of atoms, of ions, which are charged species, or they could be made up of molecules as well. But what's important is that they have a, a very regular arrangement. So they could either be oriented in the same way or they're alternating regularly. But we're not just talking in a couple of dimensions, we're talking a, a 3D structure here. So diamond, salt, sugar and ice, they all look kind of colourless, but they've all got a crystalline structure. So diamond is made of highly ordered carbon atoms. The sodium chloride that makes up your salt is made of sodium and chloride ions that have been arranged in a 3D structure that repeats again and again, but also ice. Now ice and sugar, they're not atoms and they're not ions, but they are molecules and these molecules are able to order themselves against one another and around one another. Entropy as dictated by the second law of thermodynamics means that things tend to move towards a more disordered state. And you would think that crystals are disobeying that law of thermodynamics because effectively you're creating order. What's actually happening though is that as a crystal forms, it often releases heat. And so that energy isn't just sort of staying within that system, it's being redistributed. So it's the redistribution of heat, which is actually the increase in entropy that we're seeing, even though the physical ordering of these bits of matter is increasing. When we think about a thermodynamic problem like this, it's easy to presume that it is a closed system, but actually you can't just think of the problem in isolation from the rest of your lab or your city or the world, you know, you're actually thinking about it as one part of a system the size of the universe. So really, these entropy issues are way bigger than you can confine in your lab.